My name is Amy. It was about a week ago that my nearly 80-year-old father-in-law collapsed. Since my father-in-law was the president of a major corporation, the employees panicked for a while. As I lived with my father-in-law, I informed my husband, who was living separately, about his collapse. However, my husband simply said, Oh, I see. Without much surprise. The funeral was conducted on a grand scale, as a corporate funeral. And when the funeral was over, my husband showed up at my parents-in-law house with his mistress. It was the first time to meet his mistress, a flashy-dressed woman who roamed around the house as if she was inspecting it. Wow, impressive. Must be from a conglomerate company. There are a lot of expensive things here, huh? Yeah, indeed. So, all of this stuff will become John's, right? John is my husband. Born into a wealthy family, he has never faced financial difficulties. Therefore, he used money to make friends, and this mistress is probably after his money as well. My husband has never worked in his life, no matter how much my father-in-law urged him to work. I have plenty of money. No need for me to toil away. That's what he said, and he did nothing. However, as he reached a certain age, perhaps he felt uncoolness of doing nothing, and he declared himself an artist and has been living a laid-back life ever since. I married such a husband not out of deep love but because my father-in-law needed someone to inherit the company, and he noticed me, as a secretary at the time. Going against my father-in-law's wishes wasn't an option, and the thought of not inheriting any fortune was distressing. Moreover, when his father, CEO of a major corporation, passed away, there would be no one to support him financially if I didn't comply. With these concerns, my husband decided on our marriage without even going on a single date. As for me, burdened by debts my parents had accumulated, I couldn't refuse this marriage. However, even after getting married, there was nothing resembling a normal marital life with my husband. Instead, I delved into work as my father-in-law's successor. Thanks to that, even now, after my father-in-law's passing, I don't face any financial difficulties because of my job. Wow, impressive. I wonder how many millions in inheritance. Huh. Millions? Come on, it should be billions, for sure. Wow, incredible. Truly befitting of a conglomerate. Sorry for snatching away the only son of a conglomerate family. Mary clings to her husband and laughs as she says that. I don't really have any resentment about being snatched away. So, John gets all the inheritance, right? Yeah, of course. I'm an only child, so it's all mine. But it won't go to the wife, right? The inheritance is all mine. From now on, I can spend money however I want without worrying about my old man. Awesome, right? But, seriously, if you don't give something to her, she might say something later. So, as a compensation, I'll give you one of the possessions. You can choose whatever you want. Okay. Well then. First, it'll be the company. The company? Ah. Oh. There was something like that. We don't need such a thing. We won't work, right? Well, whatever. The company is yours. That's good. Well then, aside from that, how about giving me the wristwatch your father used to wear? A wristwatch? Is that all you want? There are so many more expensive things here, and you choose that? Because it's a keepsake, I prefer something his father used. Hmm, interesting. You're taking something like that from an old geezer? That's hilarious. Well, that's fine. It won't be worth much anyway. Oh, and by the way, since you're no longer of use, we should divorce, right? Divorce? Don't say you don't want to. I won't say anything. There was never anything like a married couple between us, right? That's right. You were always busy with work, and I was always feeling lonely. What was he feeling lonely about? He never worked and just left everything on me. How much my father-in-law worried about him catching such a woman. Well then, sign it. With this, we'll be strangers. Don't come asking me for money later. That's right. This wristwatch is a substitute for alimony. I see. I understand. But are you really okay with just that? Of course. It's obvious. We have such a big house and there are so many possessions here. And surely that old man has a lot of savings somewhere. From now on, we can live as we like. That's right, considering that old man, he probably has a ton of money stashed away in a Swiss bank. 
Swiss bank? Yeah, a Swiss bank. Rich people always stash their money there for tax reasons. So, my old man must have stashed it there too. Seems like you don't know about those kinds of things. I see. I've never really thought about it. Too bad. If you had, you could have withdrawn the money and put it in your account when you found out my old man had died. You're a fool. I see. Definitely a fool. Hey, that car is probably worth quite a bit, right? The car? Oh yeah, my old man loved cars. That one is quite valuable. The two of them are into talking about how much this was and how much that was. As I listened, I recalled what my father-in-law had said. Hey, how long are you going to stay here? Hurry up and pack your stuff and get out. Oh, yes. Do you even have a place to go? You don't have to worry about her. Oh, no need to worry. I have already purchased a condominium. Wow, you've got it all figured out. But I bet it's like a rabbit hutch compared to this mansion. Yes, indeed. It's certainly no match for this mansion. With that, I smiled sweetly. I went back to a condominium I purchased near the company after leaving my parents-in-law's house. From now on, even if I work late, I won't have to go through any hardships. It's going to be much easier. I thought as I enjoyed my carefree days. Then, unexpectedly, I received a phone call. Hey there. How's the poor life? Who is this? It's Mary, John's wife. Oh, you've already got married? Of course. We're family now. While you're getting divorced and poor, I've joined the ranks of the conglomerate. I see. Congratulations. Is there something you need? You don't have to act so aloof. I thought I'd enlighten you about the treasures in our house, considering how pitiful you are, so I decided to call you. What do you mean? I have to go back to my work, so I can't chat for long. Talking about work, poor people are so pitiful. You have to work hard just to survive. It's not like that. It's a valuable company left by my father-in-law. I'm just protecting it. I'm saying it's pitiful, being tied down to something like that. You can't escape from it. Is that so? John told me, being tied down to such a company won't get you anywhere. John is an artist. He doesn't want to be bound by a company, and neither do I. I see. That's good to know. Huh? Why? If someone likes being tied to a company, they might end up fighting for the company even if they can't do the job. I want to protect my father-in-law's company at all costs, but I guess you and John don't share the same sentiment, do you? Well, being tied down to something uncertain and difficult isn't as good as something that pays off immediately, right? I see. Is that all you wanted to talk about? I have a meeting soon. It's not over yet. The real discussion starts now. Irritated by the pointless conversation, I was eager for the call to end soon. Hey, there's going to be an appraiser coming this weekend. An appraiser? Yep, we're getting our valuables appraised to see how much they're worth. Okay, and what does that have to do with me? That's why we thought we'd let you join in too. You'll probably be so jealous if they're worth billions. I don't think they'll be jealous. Why not? You're definitely going to be jealous. I don't think so. I have no interest in how much the things in that house are worth because they're not mine. So, I won't be jealous. You have such a boring personality. You're like a robot. Is that so? Yeah. But even someone like you would definitely be jealous if they were worth billions. So come over this weekend. I'd rather not. Just come. I might even think about giving you something else. I didn't want to waste precious time on such trivial matters. But Mary kept insisting so persistently that I eventually gave in and agreed to go over the weekend. I got into my car and headed to the house where I used to live with my father-in-law. Waiting for me at the door was Mary, dressed in tacky clothes. Welcome. What do you think this outfit? It's super high-end. Did you buy it? Hee <laughs> hee, yeah. Being from a conglomerate, I got a dress like this. To me, it seemed odd for someone from a conglomerate to wear such cheap clothes, but apparently, Mary considered them high-end. As I entered, John was lounging on the sofa, swirling his wine glass. Ah, so you both wanted to show me your conglomerate game. I couldn't help feeling sorry for them. How's this lifestyle? We seem much wealthier than you were when you lived here, don't we? Maybe so. Exactly. 
You couldn't handle a relaxed life like this or drinking wine all day. Maybe not. But such matters were trivial. Despite thinking that, I glanced around the room where I used to live with my father-in-law, and I noticed a photo of my parents-in-laws, their shoulders leaning against each other. It was a photo I rarely saw when I lived here. I gently touched the photo, feeling its warmth. There's another thing I can take, remember? Huh? Well, it depends on what it is. What? Suddenly want something valuable? No, I want this photo. It's something my father-in-law cherished. Oh, that? Sure, take it. I was planning to throw it away anyway. Thank you. You're such a weird woman. As I gazed at the photo of my father-in-law and mother-in-law in the frame, it felt like I was seeing them again after a long time. Mary went to answer the doorbell, and there stood the awaited appraiser. I've been waiting for you. Sorry for the delay. It's quite a splendid residence you have here. Oh yes. That's why we're going to have plenty to appraise today. There's a mountain of valuables in this house. I'm looking forward to it. Well then. Let me get started. The appraiser walked around the house, examining everything, but he didn't stop at any of the items. Hey. Mr. Appraiser. You've been passing by all the valuables without even looking at them. Please appraise them properly. Um. Which items are you referring to? What are you talking about? Aren't these vases and paintings valuable? No. Madam. Everything in this house is counterfeit. Counterfeit? What does that mean? They're fake. So even if I were to put a price on them, they'd only be worth a few thousand yen. None of them are worth stopping for. No way. It's true. John. What's going on? That can't be. My father was a conglomerate. He had an eye for antiques. Are you saying he collected fakes? Seems to be the case. No, that's impossible. There must be at least one valuable item, right? I hate to say it, but these things happen. Wealthy people have their pride. You see. They buy items that amateurs can't discern. And decorate their homes with them. When we come to appraise after their passing, most of the items turn out to be worthless. So, these might be the case here. Oh no. What has he done? The two of them were clearly frustrated, but as I watched them, I couldn't help but suppress a smile, trying not to burst into laughter. Then, the appraiser's eyes fell on the watch on my wrist. This. Excuse me. Miss. This seems to be a gentleman's timepiece. Yes, it's a memento from my father-in-law. May I take a look at it? Sure. I took it off from my wrist and handed it to the appraiser. He began to examine it carefully this time. I see. This is quite impressive. Is that so? Huh? How much is it? It's more than two million dollars. It's more than two million dollars. What's the hell of that? Though, everything in this house is cheap? Even if you say so. Give me back that watch. No, you can't. This is my father-in-law's memento. If it's a memento, you could have something else that's cheap. That's not possible. My father-in-law wore it every day, and that's why I wanted it. He used to wear this watch and work. I don't need to know about that. Hey, Mary. Stop it, it's embarrassing. Even if pots and paintings have no value, there's still a car, savings in the bank, and this house itself is of incredible value. Oh. You're right. Okay, it seems like the appraisal is over, I'm gonna go. Saying that, I took the picture with a frame and went outside. Then, the appraiser chased after Murr. Excuse me, madam. Yes? What is it? Could you show me the picture frame? Ah, sure, here you go. Taking the frame, the appraiser looked intently and nodded deeply. I knew it. This picture frame alone is worth $70,000. It seems that valuable items come to those who are not greedy. Please take care of it. With that said, he left. I never imagined that the picture frame would have such value. I put it away in my bag. Since that day, Mary and John seemed to ignore the counterfeits and tried to sell the car next. However, it seemed there was another pitfall, as once again, a call came from Mary. 
what's going on here? Even though I was working, that was the first thing she shouted. What's going on? What do you mean? It's about the car. The car? The car that old man left. Ah, he seemed to have a hobby of collecting cars. Even though he had so many, none of them can be sold. What's going on? Why can't they be sold? Are they broken or something? That's not it. They're all on their mortgage. Oh, I see. What the hell is going on? Even when we try to sell the house, it's mortgaged. What's happening? John says I should ask you because you were the one living with the old man. Well, maybe. The company was having financial difficulties, so he mortgaged them to borrow money. That's a possibility, right? What? I've never heard such a thing. Wait a minute. If the company is struggling, you inherited it, right? Yes. So, you'll have to pay off the debts, won't you? No, while I inherited the company, the debts were borrowed against my father-in-law's personal assets. If the company were to repay them, it would be repaying my father-in-law. What's that? How do you repay someone who's passed away? There's a clause in my father-in-law's will stating that the debt repayment obligation ceases upon his passing. It's probably because it's pointless to repay after his death, you know. I'm going to get it. That's not how it works. Then what about the car? What about the house? Since they're mortgaged, they'll likely be auctioned off soon because the debts won't be repaid, that is. If you really want the car or house, you'll have to pay off the debt yourselves. How much is it? Probably a few hundred thousand dollars. We can't pay. That's right. So, if it's auctioned off, does the debt go away? Even if it's auctioned, it won't cover the borrowed amount. It might reduce from a few hundred thousand to ten thousand, perhaps. Either way, it's the same. It's a mess. What should we do? Oh, what about the bank? He has money in Swiss bank, right? I have no idea why John thought that, but my father-in-law didn't have a single dollar in a Swiss bank. He only had accounts in American banks, and as far as I know, there were only hundreds left. Why would that happen? I thought he was a tycoon? Even if he was a tycoon, money doesn't come without work, and as the president of the company, fundraising is part of the job. So, he made his own money, borrowed from wherever he could. And now, this is the result. So, we have to pay off 10,000 in debt? That's right. Since we inherited the estate. There's no estate. All the possessions were fake. The car and house are mortgaged, and there are no savings. Debt is also part of the estate, a negative one. We don't need that kind of thing. Even if you say that, the inheritance process is already done, right? You should have refused the inheritance when you had the chance, but you didn't, so. That's. Hey. Yes, what is it? The company is making profits, isn't it? Indeed, but downsizing is unavoidable. We're doing our best to manage. Give me some of the company's profits. Why would that be? That old man was John's father, so the company's profits belong to John. No, that company is mine now. The ownership has been changed, and I've assumed the role of president. You have no connection anymore. Oh, so all we'll be left with is debt. That's the consequence of your choices. We'll be poorer than before. That's unavoidable. It's unfair that you're the only one with a company. Just because I became the president, it's not smooth sailing. It requires substantial funds to maintain. Do you have that money? How much do you need? Around $2 million for now. Then you'll be burdened with $2 million in debt, too. Well, you see, I have the wristwatch left by my father-in-law. I intend to use that to rebuild the company if needed. You're still unfair. By the way, that photo frame you called cheap is valued at $100,000. No way. But even so, if I can rebuild the company, I don't intend to sell either. Then give me the wristwatch. You already have a house, belongings, and a car but they don't all turn into money. Mary and her husband thought they could live without financial worries, but in the end, they were burdened only with debt, leading to an even harder life of poverty than before. A year later, my ex-husband came to the company as he couldn't find another solution. Hey, lend me some money. Oh, long time no see. Please, I need you to lend me some money. Even if you ask for a loan, you don't have the ability to repay, 
Do you? I'm working now. If you're working, then you shouldn't need to borrow, right? But that's not enough. With debts of millions of dollars, it's impossible. You expect to borrow from here when you can't even repay your existing debts? That's clearly impossible. I'll somehow manage to repay. Don't say you'll do something you can't. Then hire me. Oh dear, aren't you already working? At your company, just pay me a high salary, say $10,000 a month, and that'll be enough. What nonsense. Someone who's never had a proper job asking for a million a month. Impossible. If you don't hire me, Mary will be mad at me. My current job is just a part-time gig with low pay. But since you used to be my wife, you'd pay me a high salary, right? I have no intention of turning the company into my personal asset. That's not feasible. I can't survive without it. Please, help me out. I'm begging you. We're divorced. Why should I help you? Don't say that. Please. The company should have been passed down to you. But you spent your time fooling around, and this is where it led. You should accept the consequences. This poverty is killing me. Well, isn't it nice to be with your beloved girlfriend? This isn't a joke. I can't help but see her as a demon now. I hate working. Why did it come to this? Your father was worried about you not working. He was concerned about how you'd manage. Really? But now, it seems like you might finally become decent. Why's that? Because if you don't work, you can't eat. Poverty is amazing after all. I hate it. But seriously, why did dad keep buying those fake items? It's still a mystery to me. Ah, about that. Shall I reveal the secret? Huh? Do you know? Yeah. He was afraid you'd squander everything once he passed away since you started living with Mary. He thought you'd become even more foolish with such an amount of money. What? So, he spent three years making replicas. He sold all the genuine items. And the money went into the company, right? Partly. It was used when the company faced difficulties. Wait. So? The remaining money is in a Swiss bank under my name. You have it? Correct. So, you snatched the inheritance? No, it was a pre-mortem gift. I paid the taxes on it. And it's used for the company, so I don't waste it like you do. This is insane. I've been struggling so much. It was all for your sake. Why? Because you didn't work. And another foolish thing was choosing poverty by abandoning your wife for a mistress. Was my father aware of all this? Yeah. That's why the company was doing well. You're no longer a part of it though. What the hell? Well, now that you understand, will you leave? To your poor wife's place. Where the hell are you living now? Did you move from that mansion to another mansion after all? I have no desire to live in such a mansion. It's much better to live somewhere suitable for one person. Where are you living then? There. I pointed to the mansion visible from the window. Huh? Which one? That one. Are you kidding? Why can you live in a place like that? Because I'm the CEO. All of that? Of course. Why? I'm poor. Why do you get to have all the good stuff? Because I picked up what you abandoned. What did I abandon? This company. You said you didn't want to work, but if you had worked properly, this chair I'm sitting on now would have been yours. And you should have been living in that house. But you abandoned it all. All right, I get it. I get it. Then let's do this. What? Let's get remarried. I'll divorce Mary. That way, I'll be part of the conglomerate too. That's out of the question. Why not? You threw that away. Get along with Mary. I'll live happily in your place from now on. That's stupid. Give me back my privileges. I'm the rightful heir. You're annoying. I'll call the security guard. Keep living as a poor person. Your poor wife is waiting for you. Damn it. John was dragged away by the security guard, looking frustrated and angry. After that, John continued to live with Mary, who had turned into a demon. But whenever Mary spoke, she would say, Hurry up and go to work. It's the debt left by your dad so it's natural that you pay it. But I don't want to work. What do you mean you don't want to work? Stop fooling around. I'm an artist. I can't do some cheap jobs around here. Pretending to be an unsuccessful artist is enough. If you call yourself an artist, then create something that actually makes money. It's because of you that I became poor. 
If I hadn't married you, I wouldn't be living like this. Every day, John is pushed to work, but having never worked before, John struggles even with part-time jobs and gets shouted at by his senior student colleagues. He gets yelled at at work and at home. One day, Amy couldn't take it anymore and left the house, fed up with this life. John became alone and tried to repay the debt on his own, but no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't repay such a large amount. Eventually, he chose the path of bankruptcy and ended up falling into homelessness. On the other hand, as for me, the company is doing well, and I'm enjoying an elegant lifestyle. My father-in-law's watch on my wrist ticks still now, pointing towards my bright future.